Hello, and welcome to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I am your host, Mr. Miller. This podcast will cover a number of topics that happened on this date in history. Please visit the podcast webpage at thishappentoday.buzzsprout.com. There you can download the notes page, which will help you organize the information, as well as develop your own ideas on how these events change the world around us. If you're interested in hearing more, please consider subscribing so you will not miss out on what happens tomorrow in history. Today is July 1st. A zip code is a numbering system with a separate code numbers for all cities in the United States. On April 30th, 1963, Postmaster General John A. Granuski announced that the zip code would begin on July 1st, 1963. The United States Post Office Department introduced the Zone Improvement Plan, or ZIP Code, a coding system that assigned codes on maps to all addresses in the country. In 1943, the United States Post Office Department divided cities into zones to assist in speed sorting and mail delivery. By July 1963, a five-digit ZIP Code had been assigned to every address throughout the United States map. What do the ZIP Codes stand for? There are five digits in the original zip codes. The first digit indicates one of ten large geographic areas in the country, ranging from zero in the northeast to nine in the far west. The second and third digits indicate metropolitan areas and sectional centers accessible to common transportation. The fourth and fifth zip code digits indicate local post offices or postal zones in larger cities. How are the zip codes used by the post office? This new zoning improvement plan coding system made it necessary to establish large transportation centers throughout the country to relieve major metropolitan post offices of the burden of processing all of the mail. In 1965, a high-speed optical reader was introduced by the U.S. Post Office Department. The machine could sort mail by reading the zip code automatically. They read the addresses and printed a bar on the envelope that corresponded with them. At the destination post offices, a barcode sorter would then read the barcode and sort the letters by zip code and address into appropriate holding areas to await delivery. Sectional centers are where most mail is processed. A letter mailed at your local post office may be delivered to a sectional center if it isn't destined for delivery within the same zip code as you mailed it. Before delivery to a local post office for mail carriers to distribute mail to its final destination, automated systems sort the mail and postmark it. In 1983, the United States Postal Service expanded the zip code system to include four more digits. This called zip plus four code. The additional digits identify even more precisely the mail's destination. According to the United States Post Office, the new sixth and seventh digits indicate a delivery sector such as several blocks, a group of streets, a group of post office boxes, several office buildings, or a small geographic area. The last two numbers denote a delivery segment, which might be one floor of an office building, one side of a street between intersecting streets, specific departments in a firm, or a group of post office boxes. This new ZIP plus 4 code speeded up the mail by handling, by reducing the number of times a letter had to be handled, and reducing the number, the time mail carriers spent placing their mail in the order of delivery. A multi-line optical character reader reads the addresses, then sprays a barcode representing the zip plus four two plus two additional digits, indicating the exact delivery street address. Using this barcode database, it can sort the mail in correct sequence for each carrier's delivery route. The United States Post Office and Postal Service emphasize the importance of addressing your mail correctly in order to assure a timely delivery. According to the Postal Service, using the correct zip code helps direct your mail to more efficiently and accurately. They suggest you use a site search such as zipcodes.com to obtain the correct zip code as well as the correct spelling of the city and state. If you need to get a zip code and don't have the access to the internet, you can call 1-800-ASK-USPS and get it by phone. Using zip code maps can also help and may save you a dime on the call. And then on this day in 1999, Scottish Parliament reconvened for the first time in 292 years. It was so typically canny when Winnie Elwing announced the first meeting of the Scottish Parliament in 292 years. I want to start with the words that I have wanted to say or hear someone say. The Scottish Parliament, which adjourned on March 25th, 1707, is hereby reconvened. A breakout of applause and cheering sealed the historic moment at the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland building where the new Parliament found its first home. In place on May 12, 1999 were Scotland's first batch of MSPs 
with the 129 members elected just a week before when Labor took 38.77% of the vote and SNP 28% of the vote. Outside pipers played and Scots dressed in 18th century clothes gathered for an occasion in a long echo of times of Scottish Parliament past. Some 292 years before Winnie Ewing made her address, fierce debate, unrest, and rioting met the agreement of the Treaty of the Union in 1707. Mrs. Ewing, who led this famous 1967 SNP victory in the Hamilton by-election and took her place in the new parliament as MSP for Highlands and Islands, referred to these days in her opening statement. She recalled the words of the Earl of Seafeld when signing the Act of the Union. There is an end to an old line song. And Mrs. Ewing then added, we can begin to write the new Scottish song. This new Scottish Parliament followed the September 1997 referendum when Scots were asked if there was support for the creation of a Scottish Parliament with devolved powers and whether the Parliament should have a tax-varying powers. And finally, in 1958 in Cornwall, changed, a blast changed the face of the Ir St. Lawrence River forever in a special event planned for Iroquois to mark the 60th anniversary. Organized by the Iroquois waterfront community, the event will memorialize the inundation, the flooding of the occupied small and large towns on the river valley. At 8 a.m. on July 1, 1958, the Cofferdam in Cornwall was demolished, and over the next week, the St. Lawrence gradually filled its new basin. The sites of the vi former villages all on the St. Lawrence between Iroquois and Cornwall were gradually flooded as the river rose to take its new level, covering most of the area's pioneer's beginnings forever. On July 1st, the 60th anniversary of the Big Bang, the Iroquois Beach will be the site of the modern moderated discussion that will see a number of local folks who lived in the area in 1958 sharing their recollections with current residents, as well as anyone in the audience who has memories of that event will be invited to tell their story. This informal event will memorialize the inundation, the flooding of the occupied small and large towns in the River Valley. Conversations will be informal will take place either on the new deck or under one of the picnic shelters. There will be a PA system to ensure everyone can hear the stories and plans call for the conversations to be recorded and copies provided to local schools and libraries. Organizers have set the time at 10 a.m. until about noon when activities will shift to the Iroquois Matilda Lions Canada Day festivities at the locks. To tie in with the event, the beach canteen will be open to provide refreshments. You have been listening to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I thank you for listening, and I hope that you have enjoyed learning about historical events from the past. Thank you to the following websites for their information regarding today's topics. ThePeopleHistory.com Zip Codes Introduced to the United States at Zip-Codes.com Scottish Parliament Reconvenes at Scotsman.com and the Cofferdam on the St. Lawrence River removed at nationvalleynews.com. The music used as the background track for this podcast is Americana, created by Kevin McLeod on Incompetech.com. If you enjoyed this information and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing as this will keep the historical events in your feed in the morning for each day. I hope you have a great day.